Social organizations in Chile began to mobilize on a new day of protest in the midst of commemorating two years of the social outburst. Nicaragua announced the start of COVID-19 vaccination program for children with Cuban vaccines next week. A large explosion tore through a Shia mosque in Kandahar City during Friday prayers causing heavy casualties. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ray Gamas from the Telesur Studios in Havana. We begin with the news. Social organizations in Chile begin to mobilize in the day of protest in the midst of commemorating two years of the social outburst. In the location of La Hermida, several social collectives have begun the protest and moved by the same demands that triggered the response in 2019. According to some speakers, this upcoming October 18th cannot be an occasion to rejoice about the reconciliation, but a moment of fighting without repression of justice and compensation and recognition of victims. In the midst of the moment, the Mapuche movement notes that the date coincides with the militarization of the southern Macrozan, while the human rights the collective reflects that the people's blood tainted at the asphalt with the murder of their companion, Denis Cortes. Due to the situation, the popular movement reiterates its petition of the president stepping down, taking into consideration that he is also involved in the Pandora Papers corruption scandal. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro denounced the use of hard criminal groups by the Colombian government of Ivan Duque, tasked with entering Venezuela to attack its electricity system. To increase the quality and the capability of intelligence and counterintelligence to detect hard groups trained by the Colombian government of Ivan Duque, to attack the electrical system, hired groups, hitmen, with former police officers and ex-military men from Venezuela, from Colombia with paramilitary training in Colombia with specific goals of attacking the electrical system and attacking strategic objectives in Venezuela, of trying to disrupt the electoral climate, the electoral panorama of the country. We have already talked about it and I fully trust in the action capacity of all the 560 units of our National Bolivarian Armed Forces in perfect civic, military and police union. As noted, uh, Venezuela continues to face aggressions against its civilian population, the stabilization mechanisms uh, that take to spark social unrest. Our correspondent Andre Vieira details in the report. Denounced a new attack against the national electric system, triggering a service failure in large part of the capital region. There has been a new attack on the national electric system at least one hour ago. There was a breakdown of lines 1 and 2 of Papelon Convento substation and in the capital district, which caused Convento and Nodal substations to lose power, which also affected the substations of Cotamil Santa, Rosa Chacao and Magallanes. The attack damaged 30% of the electric power supply in the capital. The possibility of it being a new attack in what has been named an electric war is not ruled out, to which Minister Reverol highlighted the swift response of the government to re-establish more than 90% of the power grid. In this moment, the whole country is the electric national system stabilized. At this moment, the entire country is stabilized. There is no nationwide impact, but there will remain 15 to 10 percent while we manage to repair the conductors. All the necessary equipments and logistics is here to restore them immediately. This possible attack on the power system comes after Venezuela experienced last weekend an electoral drill in preparation for the mega elections in which governors, majors, councilmen and state legislators will be elected and three days before the fourth round of Venezuela peace talks in Mexico. In Mexico. André Vieira y Jesús Romero, Telesur, Caracas, Venezuela. 
The 15th meeting of the Russian Venezuelan High Level Intergovernmental Commission concluded in Moscow with the signing of new cooperation agreements. The Venezuelan delegation, led by Industry and Production Minister Jorge Arreaza, held several talks with the Russian group of representatives directed by TP2 Chairman of the Government of the Russian Federation, Yuri Barizov. Venezuela expressed its interest to increase the Russian investments in sectors such as farming, mining, and energy. It also highlighted that the country's torn and effective legal framework for the protection of foreign investors. The productive foreign investment allow, allowed the Bolivarian government to seal business deals and confidentially sign contracts which protect investors from the United States' unilateral sanctions. On Friday, a shooting took place outside a Terminal 2 of Mexico City's International Airport. According to a spokesperson, it was a chase-and-run incident that went out of control and ended at the airport. Sources report that a van arrived at the Terminal 2 traffic circle, dragging a motorcycle and shooting. Two people were wounded with firearms projectiles, in addition to one deceased. So far, there is one detainee. Several bags with human remains have been exhumed from a massive grave in Panama amid searches for the victims of the United States' 1989 invasion. Attorney General Xiomara Guerra said that four bags of remains have been recovered so far at the Monte Esperanza Cemetery in the city of Cologne. The military operation took the lives of some 300 civilians and marked the end of the dictatorship of General Manuel Antonio Noriega. Human rights organizations have long estimated the true number of Panamanian victims could be higher than the official toll of 300, prompting former President Juan Carlos Varela to establish a commission to investigate the true number. The invasion is an open wound for many Panamanians every year commemorate the event and have called for December 20th to be declared a day of national mourning. On Thursday, retired Guatemala military withdrew the road blockades and ceased a protest, which will resume on October 19. For the second consecutive day, ex-military personnel blocked the main highways to demand financial compensation amount of some $15,000. One of the main protest points was uh, Isabel Avenue that interconnects at the seaport of Puerto Barrios. The Lizur correspondent Santiago Botón reports that the veterans agreed to resume the protest next Tuesday, October 19, to coincide with the congressional session of World Legal Initiative 1564, which establishes economic compensation for former military personnel, will be debated. The Army veterans are demanding compensation for their participation in the Guatemalan internal conflict from 1960 to 1996, which left 1,000 dead, disappeared, and displaced. We'll be right back after this a very short break. Welcome back. In Nicaragua, health authorities will begin vaccinating children against COVID-19 with Cuban vaccines next week. Vice President Rosario Murillo announced that the vaccination program will benefit children from the two years of age uh, who will receive uh, the Cuban vaccines of Dallas, Soberano 1 and Soberano 2. Vaccination will be voluntary and children will be accompanied by their relatives at all times. The announcement comes as a first batch of 1.2 million doses is to arrive in a Central American country on the third week of October. In November, a second batch of 2 million doses of Soberano 2 and 1 million of a dollar is also due to arrive.
The Thailand government introduced on Friday its COVID-19 passport, mandatory for all workers in the country. The decision comes amid strike threats and demonstrations. The measure facilitates uh, the suspension of salary payment for those workers uh, who refuse to comply with the regulation, in addition to a fine of uh, 1,500 euros. Also, employers are held the workers continue to work without his document will be fined from 600 to 1,000 euros. Mario Draghi's government fears a Black Friday of protest, strikes and absenteeism of workers who would not go to their workplaces because they do not have the certificate by their own decision or lack of opportunity. And President Biden signed an executive order to raise the legal limit of the national debt, allowing the United States to avoid a default for a few weeks. The executive order raises the debt's legal limit by $480 billion, setting it at $28.9 trillion. With the recently signed order, the government will be able to meet its obligations until December 3rd, avoiding a possible default. The Senate and the House of Representatives approved the new limit. However, this is a temporary measure. In December, lawmakers will have to revisit the issue and finalize spending bills in order to avoid a possible government shutdown. The Chinese government urged the United States to change its human rights policy in other countries after rejoining the United Nations Human Rights Council. Over three years ago, the United States announced its high-profile withdrawal from the UN Human Rights Council which is still fresh in our memory. We hope that the U.S. will take its re-election as a member of the Human Rights Council as an opportunity to practice multilateralism with concrete actions, engage in constructive dialogue and cooperation with other parties, and play a positive role in advancing the work of the Human Rights Council. Right after the re-election, the U.S. once again pointed the finger at other countries over their human rights situation. It is time for the U.S. to get rid of this stubborn, distasteful hobby. If the U.S. continues to apply double standards, politicize the human rights issue, and attack and oppress other countries after the re-election, it will surely face backlashes. The best option for the U.S. is to immediately remedy its severe violations of human rights at home and abroad. The UN Biodiversity Conference in the Chinese uh, city of uh, Kunming closed uh, and indeed note after a week uh, that broad joint commitment and pledges of funding to help countries put words into action. The Executive Secretary of the UN uh, Convention said the country's joint declaration at the conference uh, and the strong political direction provided by many ministers had put global efforts on track. Standout moments uh, during the meeting were a pledge by the 195 participating countries to reverse the loss of animal and plant species by 2030, and a more than $200 million donation by China to a biodiversity fund established. The COP15 summit and the Climate Summit COP26, which will take place in Glasgow next month, are crucial meetings uh, on the environment being held this year. President Emmanuel Macron received uh, his Guinea Bissau counterpart in Paris as the Guinea Bissau's armed forces announced that they had identified soldiers who were preparing a coup to overthrow the constitutional order of the small West African country. The former Portuguese colony has suffered four military patches since it gained independence in 1974, the most recent in 2012. According to a statement at the visit to, of Guinea Bissau head of state took place after the invitation of his French counterpart. The Guinean presidency stated that the meeting between the two top diplomats strengthened the traditional ties of friendship and cooperation. Guinea Bissau's delegation included the Minister of Finance, Jean Fadia, and the Minister of Defense, Sanchi Fati. And with 72% of a vote, Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo won the Socialist Party's nomination to be its 2022 presidential candidate. The 60-year-old politician uh, who announced her plans to run for president a month ago aims to revive the embattled socialist hopes in April's elections uh, with a campaign that emphasizes on environmental and social issues. I am very proud and honored to represent our party. And I am also a woman who will carry the voice of French women. 
And it will go highlighted the Socialist Party's program aimed at unseating the ruling party. President Macron has yet to confirm that he's seeking a second five-year term, but he's expected to do so. From this left, from social progress, from great conquest, from justice, from social justice, from the rule of law, from this Republican left that wants to prepare and rebuild a republic, and of course, its promise of equality. We have more stories coming up after this final short break. Welcome back. A large explosion tore through a Shia mosque in the southern Afghan city of Kandahar during Friday prayers causing heavy casualties. The cause of the explosion was not immediately clear, but it came a week after a suicide attack on Shia worshippers in a mosque in the northern city of Kunduz that was claimed by ISIS. Medical sources and provincial officials confirmed a total of over 50 people and around 90 injured, and at least 15 ambulances were rushing to and from Sin. Taliban special forces have secured the site and have asked people to donate blood to help victims. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the hundreds of fighters loyal to the Islamic State militant group gather in northern Afghanistan with plans to move between the ex soviet Central Asian countries disguised as refugees. Concentration of extremists and terrorist groups, the AI, the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, Yamad Ansarullah, Al-Qaeda, and a number of other groups near the borders of the CIS countries. According to our information, the number of EI fighters in northern Afghanistan alone is about 2,000. Their leaders are preparing plans to expand their influence in Central Asian countries and Russian regions by stirring up ethno-religious conflicts and religious hatred. The terrorists seek to infiltrate the territory of CIS countries by posing as refugees. Azerbaijan is ready to negotiate a border limitation with Armenia on condition that Yerevan recognizes territorial integrity, stated President Ilham Aliyev. The Azerbaijani head of state noted that his country hopes uh, that Armenia will use the opportunity to normalize relations. Aliyev also denounced Armenia's refusal to hand over to Azerbaijan the maps of Nagorno-Karabakh minefields. Hostilities in that region, which flared up again in uh, the late September 2020, and resulted in thousands of deaths during a month and a half of fighting, ceased on November 10th under the declaration adopted by the leaders of Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Russia. Pakistani traders and Afghan nationals are gathered at Pakistan Shkemen to protest against the border closure between the two countries. Islamabad has cut sales tax on imported fruits to zero and able to boost trade from its neighbor, but it also tightened controls on ordinary Afghans that try to cross over, fearing illegal entries. In Afghanistan, the festive pomegranate season has begun, but this year thousands of stones are of the juicy red fruit risk of rotting on tracks blocked at Pakistan's frequently shuttered border, leaving thousands of farm workers unemployed. According to the head of the French Fruits Union in Kandahar, 15,000 farm workers in the region have been laid off because the trade has been paralyzed and the fruit is rotting due to the border closing. The Pakistan-Afghanistan border has been ordered closed for the past 10 days, ever since the Afghan Taliban government came to power. The border has been frequently closed for travel and trade without any announcement. Are they managed to make trade easier? Traders have lost billions of rupees. I came from Paktika. I was sick and went to Keta for treatment. I was treated there, but it has been 10 days that we are waiting at the border at Chaman, and we are told that the border is closed. We want both governments to open the border. It is almost the third day that we are waiting here at the Shamban Bazaar. We request both governments to reopen the border. I am young and I can stand it, but there are elderly and patients who simply can't stand it. 
Israel's regime continues to violently repress the Palestinian people. On Thursday, Israeli forces killed a young Palestinian and another was injured near the city of Bethlehem in the southern part of the occupied West Bank. During the operation, the forces arrested another Palestinian who has not yet been identified, as well as uh, the other uh, two victims of the incident. Israel justified its illegal actions uh, with an alleged launching of a Molotov cocktail in a Nafak uh, street uh, west of Bethlehem. Hours earlier, the driver of a Palestinian vehicle was arrested and wounded after being shot several times following an alleged car attack north of his uh, Jerusalem. Nigerian military confirmed that at least 250 gunmen have been killed following telecoms blackout in parts of the northwest region since September. According to the country's defense chief, over 600 older gunmen, commonly known as bandits in Nigeria, were captured in the successful military operations facilitated by the interruption of the telephone and internet services in some northwestern states. The military operations against the insurgents included the rescue of kidnapped hostages from various camps of the bandits and were further extended later to parts of Sokoto, Katsina, and Kaduna states, all in the northwest region. With the ongoing operations, uh, the Nigerian government's primary objective was to ensure the peace and well-being of every citizen. South African police arrested 56 people who will face charges of a kidnapping after two government cabinet ministers and a deputy minister were taken hostage for about three hours on Thursday night. Police were called to a hotel in the Centurion area near the capital, Pretoria, to rescue defense and military veterans and Minister Tandi Mediz, her deputy minister, Taban Makwatla, and minister in the presidency, Montali Gugumbele, who had been meeting with veterans of various groups that were part of the armed struggle, which started in the 1960s against the apartheid regime. The meeting broke down uh, quickly, and the three government officials were prevented from leaving the room by some of the veterans. The South African police officers said they tried to negotiate with the hostage takers, and when that failed, they resorted to a tactical approach and successfully rescued the hostages. We've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at Telusor English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. Telusor English, I am Brie Gomez. Thank you for watching.